Hello, and welcome to Change the Face of Yoga, teaching toddlers through golden oldies. I'm very excited to be talking to lots of yoga teachers who will explain their passion for teaching yoga to students with different ages, physical fitness levels, wellness levels, and different goals. They will explain the benefits of yoga for these students and will be including teacher tips and pose modifications. I am Stephanie Cunningham of Yoga Lightness, and I've been teaching over 50s for 10 years. So this area is my passion and the passion of many other yoga teachers that you will be listening to in this series. Thank you so much for listening, and let's get started. This is episode 15 of Changing the Face of Yoga. We're talking to Jodi Gillum Pindergast about her fusion of yoga, uh, musculoskeletal Western medicine, and other Eastern modalities. She's extremely interesting and knowledgeable, and I think you'll enjoy it. Hello, this is Stephanie Cunningham. And I'm interviewing Jody Gillum Pindergast today. And Jody has a very interesting view on uh, the fusion of yoga and um, a type of anatomy. And so she's using the Eastern methods, but also bringing in some Western medical information. We're going to talk to her about how well that works. Welcome, Jody. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. A little little bit about Jodi, and then I'll ask her if she'd like to add anything else. But she started doing yoga in school as one of the sporting options, and she thought it would be the easiest option, but then she just fell in love with it. And so it actually was kind of meant to be, it sounds like. She's in Shivananda Yoga, and she's a yoga acharya. I may be saying that wrong, and I'll ask her later what that means, (laughs) but she's also done Zen martial martial arts and uh, Qigong, and so she's kind of fusing all of these together, plus the contemporary teachings of orthopedic surgeon Dr. Ray Long into a therapeutic approach for her students, so she has a very therapeutic view of this. And she said something very interesting, and I wanted to follow up on it. But Jody, why don't you, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, thanks for that introduction, Stephanie. Uh, my background predominantly is remedial massage and musculoskeletal therapy. And I guess I came to yoga more so as a student because I wasn't very good at any other sport. And it helped me through some illness and sickness in my life, as it does for a lot of people, I think. And then I really needed something else to help treat clients who were coming to me mostly for musculoskeletal pain. And as a practitioner, could only, you know, address their pain so far because the client has to go away basically and and fix themselves or change something in their lifestyle or adapt um, the way that they move. And so I started to integrate yoga as um, or some yoga postures as a form of rehabilitation for back pain, uh, neck pain, postural problems, and then it kind of flowed on then to working with breathing disorders, anxiety, depression, that sort of thing. So that's my approach to yoga kind of started from that therapeutic point of view, really before yoga therapy was like a thing. That's great. So let's let's just find out what yoga acharya, is that how you say it? Yeah, um, acharya. Is. Yeah. So <laughs> that just refer, refers to the advanced teacher training that I have done in the Shivananda lineage. So they format their teacher training in a Gurukula system, which is an ashram environment where you're absorbed in Yoga Vedanta for around four weeks and you live and study with your teachers or guru. And I've done the initial training for that and then the second training for that, which means I can call myself a Shivananda Yoga Acharya. Okay, great. I think this is a really interesting thing that you've done because One of the things, you know, you're saying you actually worked with individual teachers, even a guru, 
And yet you are over here looking at evidence-based medical Western information to help you with your therapeutic work with your students. How do you put those two kind of really almost opposite ideas together? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's been a process, definitely over 10 years or so. I think it's very important to teach yoga in the cultural context that it's being delivered in. So I was very fortunate to travel to India and be absorbed in, I guess, the philosophical side and its Vedantic root. And for example, in the Shivananda lineage, the headstand is Shushasana is the first posture. So I, I took this Shivananda knowledge that I had and brought it back to Australia to teach to people with busy, modern, stressful lives. And obviously you can't pull out the headstand for the first posture in the sequence to deliver. So I learned to adapt the Shivananda sequence and create almost little pre-asanas or mini sequences to get people to fulfill those postures eventually. And I sort of based my rehabilitation knowledge on on getting to those postures as well, which uh, Ray Long takes a very similar point uh, approach to, to practice as well. So yeah, I basically had to adapt that eastern point of view to fit my clients basically yeah I just it was just an interesting idea that you've done a lot of that you fused several different kinds of eastern methodologies uh, with this western and then also the guru versus the evidence-based and I think you may be a forerunner of what yoga may be in the future. So we could probably all learn quite a bit from you because I think that's how we're all going to go pretty soon. Yeah, I think yoga is definitely evolving that way. And I don't really think it's a matter of verse or east versus west anymore. I think it's it's kind of becoming complementary, you know, as the Chinese medicine would see something in a yin-yang, wax and waning continuum where one kind of contains the seed of the other, but one may be more prevalent than the other. And it's kind of, I guess, evolving with all of that history and knowledge that we have now and, and the synergy of contemporary medicine on top of that. So we're in a very privileged position, I think, to teach yoga with the the scientific or contemporary knowledge that we have now based on the knowledge and wisdom of our ancestors. Yeah, it's exciting. Yes, it is. You said something else uh, in the information that you gave me, which I thought was interesting. You said students need to persevere as they start yoga through the initial challenges of being confronted with the life stories in their bodies. Yes. Could you explain that a bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So I find teaching beginner yoga um, is a very interesting process because, you know, people will usually come to yoga if they haven't had any, you know, exposure as a child or in their past. They usually come to yoga late 20s, 30s, 40s with, again, their life story, which is usually founded on some sort of injury that they've tried to correct or get around. And this is just in my experience as well. So I'll have someone who has, for example, said my doctor said I should come and do yoga to address my stress or I should come and do yoga for my spondy in my low back or my arthritis in my lumbar spine. And usually these people find it tricky just to lie down on the ground because we've spent so many years sitting in chairs and working over computers. So our body has adapted in what we call um, musculoskeletal medicine as a general adaptation syndrome. You kind of become your work or you become the instrument that you spend eight hours a day in. So yoga for me has been a process of unwinding and undoing all of those uh, injuries or stories that people might tell themselves about those injuries so that they can actually be still enough to start practicing the yoga. It's quite a um, process to even get to the yoga a lot of the time. So 
yeah, I find addressing those stories that people tell themselves where they might be attached to a particular injury in their body or a traumatic episode in their life. Yeah, so I try to address those first and then the yoga kind of evolves from there. Okay, so if you're addressing traumatic episodes or, or long-term use of the body in one way, are you also using pranayama and meditation as one of as some of your tools? Uh, probably not initially. I found in my experience very difficult to teach people pranayama and meditation when they're not grounded in the gross body. I find a lot of the time people have spent their day up in their head, you know, again, behind a computer, formulating ideas, doing their work, planning the day for their family, and then they aren't confronted with their body until they come to sit. And it's very difficult to teach somebody to do pranayama when they can't sit because they have pain in their body. And it's also very difficult to teach people pranayama when they have a dysfunctional posture, again, from sitting in a chair all day or doing all of those modern-day tasks, driving cars and things, pranayama because they can't use their diaphragm effectively from that poor posture. So I always look at teaching meditation in particular as a moving meditation, which I think is the basis of asana is to allow the body to move and unblock and clear away so that and become strong so that we can then work on those more subtle practices of, of pranayama and meditation. Really yeah. interesting. So would you say, is it fair to say that um, people, doctors, therapists, whatever, are sending people to you basically to kind of, shall we say, cure something other than just I want to try yoga yeah I think the, the people are coming to yoga because they can't find what they need from a western framework and a lot of people have already tried they've tried medication or they've tried going to the gym and getting fit when all of these busy sort of exercises are just adding to their underlying stress in the body, which just confounds whatever injury or tension they have on top of that. So, yeah, I think they're coming to yoga as a, an alternative, sometimes complementary to what they might be doing in the allopathic model, but a lot of the time it's because, yeah, they've tried everything else and we, we spend a session just calming the nervous system down, doing some mindful movement, which might not necessarily even be a specific asana, just a way of moving and being in the body and, breathe, and connecting to the breath. And I find that people will suddenly shift from that sympathetic fight-flight to that rest, digest, parasympathetic frame of mind, which... I think a lot of doctors don't have the time to address. I don't think it's because they, they necessarily can't address it or they don't understand the connection between the breath and the nervous system. But, you know, our, our medical system can't treat people with, you know, for an hour teaching them how to breathe before they then decide, you know, what to place on top of that. Excellent. Could you kind of give us a, a brief descri description of musculoskeletal therapy? I know that that's one of the basis, bases, I guess, of, of what you do. Yes. So musculoskeletal therapy has evolved out of remedial massage, and it sort of bridges the gap between soft tissue work, body work, and uh, physiotherapy. So we do a lot of hands-on palpatory soft tissue work that involves massage, trigger pointing, and then we're also trained in eastern cupping techniques, myofascial dry needling, and also trained in exercise rehabilitation as well. So it's a three-year degree that involves yeah, basically treating the body from a musculoskeletal perspective. Can you explain to me how Eastern, well, first of all, explain to me what Eastern cupping is and then how that works within the, I, I kind of understand the rest of them, but I'm, I'm yes. a bit confused on that one. <laughs> yes. So we use, you might have seen the little circular 
cut marks that people have on their back after they've gone and seen a therapist. So we use a technique where we would place the the Eastern cups, which are just the same things that you would that you would have on you if you were to see an acupuncturist. Only instead of placing the cup on a specific specific organ meridian, we actually place it over a, a trigger point or a, a blocked area of fascia or muscular tissue. And we can also use those cups as a form of myofascial release. So instead of holding them static, we start to slide the cups in order to create a little bit of uh, inflammation underneath, which has that eastern point of view of um, creating heat or removing something from the body, but it also addresses the specific musculoskeletal structure that you're working on. So they do kind of blend a little bit there, and I guess the eastern part of it is just the cups that we use, but we apply it from a western musculoskeletal point of view. If you were going to have a new student coming in who believed that they had some issues, we'll just say, you know, the computer posture issue, <laughs> what, would you, what would you do to start off with? Uh, first, I'd get them to move. So I think I'm in a really privileged position as a clinician to see a room full of people move every day as a yoga teacher. So a lot of the time I'll see a new MST client because they've come to a yoga class and I would have seen them move. But if that's not the case, I'll get the person to just move through a series of specific movements that check for injury or dysfunctional patterns in the body. And then from there I'll address the specific musculoskeletal structures with either an exercise program or hands-on uh, body work or a combination of both. Are you doing some form of body work in your yoga classes? Yeah, I think so. Even if I am not hands-on with the students in the class, I'd say that probably 50%, if not more, of my class is a form of rehabilitative body work than specific postures. When do people do people advance, shall we say, or or evolve perhaps into a more traditional yoga class after they've had this rehabilitative class? Yes. So I find that when people can be in a posture, they know how to breathe correctly because they have reactivated often a very inhibited and tight diaphragm. And when people can sit and stand and be in a posture and work from the intrinsic part of the body, which you know we call the core in Western medicine or bandha in yoga when we've awakened specific bandha so that those muscular locks can hold the person. When they have those two things happening, then the postures just come. In saying that, I have very new students that will come into, say, the Shivananda class. I do teach the traditional format from my lineage once a week, and I do have new students that will often come into that and learn that sequence from a biomechanical and intrinsic stabilisation point of view before and then have people that will come from a therapeutic class into that class as well. So it's not an either or situation, but again, they kind of evolve to complement one another over time. So you have a series of uh, classes, it sounds like. Yes. Starting with this kind of entry level that you're doing some analysis and, and helping them gain a certain amount of strength and yes um, yes so uh, good posture shall we say yeah that's <laughs> and then right move into what we would consider to be a more traditional yoga class yes that's correct yep so all of our classes are designed to complement an everyday person's life so that they can go away and feel great after a class not having attempted some some posture or some series of postures that might not be appropriate for them and and starting at a therapeutic level where we 
activate the diaphragm, calm the nervous system, and then awaken the intrinsic musculoskeletal system, and then build the core and vinyasa flowing sequences and posture on top of that foundation. Would you recommend this kind of series of classes? Because, you know, there's been a lot of new information about yoga injuries and Mm -hmm. how people are injuring themselves in yoga and and teachers are, you know, perhaps asking people to do things that they really can't do very well. And as a result, there's injuries. But this sounds like a way to kind of move people along the process the journey of yoga so that they can go into, if they want to, a very traditional class. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd absolutely agree with that. I think that there's actually a lot of, a lot of emphasis placed on yoga as a form of stretch. And a lot of the time, you know, you want to come to a yoga class because you feel tight and you want to stretch, but I don't think all yoga teachers are educated about the biomechanics of stretching, how to stretch using facilitated stretching and dynamic stretching and um, ways of activating muscles around a specific part of the body to then create stretch. I think a lot of the time we find stretch in the body and think, oh, that feels good. I should push into that stretch to make myself more flexible, which is often where the injuries come because the stretch response is actually the body saying, hang on a minute, I'm going to injure myself if you go too far. Can you pull back? And if we can Mm. talk to the breath and the nervous system, then usually we can catch ourselves before we go into that posture or we can find an activated way to to stretch into, into that posture. Well, Jody, this has been really interesting. I, I'm very impressed with the breadth and depth of your knowledge. It's, it's really impressive. You said that you were looking at the contemporary teachings of an orthopedic surgeon, uh, Dr. Ray Long. Yes. Can you um, explore that a little bit with me? Is he? I think he actually produces material for yoga teachers about anatomy. Is that correct? So Dr. Long trained with Iyengar and he he's also an orthopedic surgeon and he also saw a lot of the time yoga teachers and just the general population coming to him with injury that yoga was meant to actually heal and fix but it was having the opposite effect. He has elaborated on the eastern concept of bandha which in musculoskeletal medicine we simply call co-activation around a joint where you're switching on all of the muscles around a particular joint so that your your bones or your joint has maximum congruency or contact to contact so if you're in a particular yoga posture and rather than stretching yourself to reach further instead create your bandha or sense of switching on, it, it, it plugs your joint in, in essence, getting maximum joint congruency. And from an uh, orthopedic point of view, it's that incongruency where the joint might go past its natural range that then creates wear and tear on, on the joint that um, he sees most of his patients. So he kind of comes from yoga at that um, anatomical background but also using the sense of co-activation and bandha that's why he calls his style of yoga bandha yoga to keep the body safe and also to use postures as a form of rehabilitation if done correctly and he um, has a series of books that he has beautifully illustrated with Chris McAvoy who I think comes from a uh, animation background So they have beautifully illustrated books that show anatomy and physiology of different muscle groups and then how to apply them specifically in a yoga practice and and also talks about all of those ways that I guess you can use your body to switch on in a pose rather than always uh, stretch and reach and go past uh, a natural joint range. I I have um, downloaded some of his free material but i haven't had a chance to look at it yet so yeah, <laughs> but it looks very it is beautiful yeah. i agree the 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 person that's doing the illustrations is 
is very, very talented. Yeah. 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 Jody, I want to really thank you for this. This has really been interesting. I t- tend towards the therapeutic view of yoga too. So I find this really fascinating to do it the way that you're doing it. If anybody would like to get a hold of, of Jody and talk about this or join one of her classes or whatever, she has a website and it is at www.sourceyoga.com.au. And she also has a Facebook page, Source Yoga and musculoskeletal therapy. I obviously have well done. Word. <laughs> and she's in Brisbane, Australia. I want to, I want to really thank you, Jody. It really interesting ideas about putting together Western, you know, evidence based medicine with all of the different Eastern to to be really a complementary method to help people. I think that's that's really great. Well, I want to as I said, I want to thank you. You you've been a wonderful guest and very very interesting. Thanks for having me, Stephanie. Thank you for that wonderful interview. If you would like to be a guest on Changing the Face of Yoga, please go to my website, www.yogalightness.com.au and under the Changing the Face of Yoga tab, you can complete Be Our Guest form. After reviewing the form and finding it applicable to this podcast, we will send you a link to schedule an interview. Please download, review, and tell your friends of any podcasts that are of interest to you and to them. If you would like to contact me, send an email to info at yogalightness.com.au. And thank you for listening to Changing the Face of Yoga.